Greetings this morning. It's January 4th, 2021. Happy New Year. We are uh, delighted to come to you this morning and inviting you to pray with us as we begin this new year. Um, we are overjoyed for this part of the country. My name is uh, Ken Pepin. I'm the uh, rector here at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Fairport, New York. And this is Bill's country. And uh, apparently our Buffalo Bills team will be uh, going to the playoffs with great exuberance. Uh, we delight in them, even though I'm wearing my Patriots jersey. <laughs> Always a Patriots fan, but I can share some of that joy with my Bills uh, <laughs> friends. So we delight as we look optimistically for this new year ahead. So let us gather in prayer. The word became flesh and dwells among us, full of grace and truth. O God, let our mouth proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Christ has shown forth his glory. O oh, come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise, a Lord, raise to the Lord a shout with psalms. For you are a great God. You are great above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth. <clears throat> the heights of the hills are yours also. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For you are our God, and we are the people of your pasture, and the sheep of your hand. Oh, that today we would hearken to your voice. Christ has shown forth his glory. O oh, come, let us worship. This morning's psalm is Psalm 85. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortunes of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all our sins. You have withdrawn all your fury and turned yourself from your wrathful indignation. Restore us then, O God our Savior, and let your anger depart from us. Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you prolong your anger from age to age? Will you not give life again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in your land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring from the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. This morning's scripture is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 14 beginning at the sixth verse. In response to Thomas's question of how do they know the way, Jesus responds, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. 
Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, if I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me, does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you that the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In scripture this morning, we encounter this dialogue between uh, Philip and, and Jesus. And it's more probably more interesting for the questions. Uh, I think many of us can identify with Philip's uh, concern or questioning. And we all come to that place in our faith when, when we start to question and wonder and think about, well, how is this possible? <laughs> um, and yet Jesus' response is, you know, is, seems to be as clear and as... Um, I would say assured as, as one could ever be, um, saying that God is, is with him, uh, that the Father and Jesus are one. Um, and of course, that statement alone would have caused uh, tremendous concern among the Jewish community at the time. Um, it would be considered blasphemous at, at the very least. Um, and yet it's it's, there's an intimacy to that conversation that uh, is rather striking. Because um, Jesus is sort of putting it on the line with Philip and sort of saying, well, this is, this is how it is. And, um, you know, you know me. <laughs> to be known, to be a part of that company, um, to be welcomed into that intimacy of relationship where the truth of a person is, is revealed, I think is probably one of the most um, enlightening experiences we can have as human beings, uh, to have another person trust us enough with their truth. Um, truth and mercy, I think, are the great themes of the day. Um, the mercy in the sense of being willing to hang in there in a relationship even though we, we have doubts and we have concerns and we have questions. Um, that That's part of our faith life. That's part of the journey. And truth in the sense of that trusting, that Jesus entrusts this truth with, with his friends. Um, that's an important dimension, I think, that sometimes gets lost. Uh, we might focus on other aspects of that reading and lose that sense of the intimacy that's that's present there. So think about that as we begin this new year and this new week um, of, of, you know, if, at what level is our relationship with God? Um, do we have that intimacy with Jesus in our life? Um, do we see that connection uh, of God uh, it's God's presence in our life working through us. Um, Jesus says that we will do uh, things, even greater things than, than Jesus has done. Uh, some of us would scratch our heads saying, well, how is that possible? Or <laughs> how would that be? Um, and yet, you know, when we reflect on it, we become much more uh, aware of the many works of God throughout our lives through people that we would never suspect um, 
that they could be vehicles for God's love. So it's, it's just an amazing thing. So let's take that with us as we begin this new week and open ourselves to, to prayer for each other. We pray with optimistic hearts for, our, for, our, for the vaccines that will come this year, for those uh, for health throughout our nation. For those on the front lines of this pandemic, that they that their efforts will not be in vain. Um, we are ask God to be present to us in our relationships, that we can be truthful and merciful. Uh, let us pray for uh, those who are sick, those who are in need of God's healing love. Those who will be going through uh, surgeries this week, uh, we have a parishioner, Bonnie Wasson, who will be going for knee surgery tomorrow, that we uh, continue to pray for her. And for all who are uh, suffering this day, we pray for those who have lost loved ones, uh, for those who are mourning this time of the year. Um, for those who may not look as optimistically at the year ahead, that they be um, that they turn to God with with um, with the hope of of healing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hear our cry, O Lord, and listen to our prayer. Let us pray. Help us, O God, our Savior. Deliver us and forgive us our sins. Look upon your people and bless them with peace. Declare your glory among the nations and your wonders among all people. Do not let the oppressed be shamed or turned away. Never forgive, forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who love you, who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we could ever ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever. Amen. May God's blessing fill you this day. Enrich your life with the assurance that God is there for you, who loves you, cares for you, and wants to build this wonderful relationship with you. Come to trust that relationship. We ask God's blessing of trust and patience and hope and optimism. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Have a good day. See you tomorrow.